In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by Dino Tech by Dino Dynamics. For your nearest workshop, visit our website. And with the support of the Ramada Resort, Phillip Island. Well, coming up, as I said, in a couple of weeks' time out at Sandown International Motor Raceway is the Sandown 500. And in addition to the uh, to the big V8 race will be, as I said, a big support cast, including the po very popular V8 Utes. Joining us in just one moment will be one of the top drivers in V8 Utes. He is Jared McLeod. Also to discuss uh, issues Formula One and other international racing, joining us once again from ABC Grandstand's Box of Neutrals program, which can be heard before every Grand Prix on ABC Grandstand Digital. He is Rob James. Gentlemen, welcome to In Pit Lane. Oh, yes, thanks for having me. Thank you very much, Brett. I can also confirm at Sandown I will be, uh, well, you know, uh, Jared or Ryan? Jared. I, I always confuse your brother. Oh. Um, well, that's Rob, a good start. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I always try to run through these things during the break. I will be eating the potato cakes. Yeah. I mean, it was a... The joke wasn't worth it. I'm L sorry. I got you. your name no, wrong. That's all, right. all good. And that's it. Well, potato cakes aside, let's start. Before we head out to out to Sandown and talk about that, let's let's talk about the the elephant in the room at the moment, <laughs> Formula One. Um, for a start, Rob, let's from your point of view, Nico Rosberg versus uh, Lewis Hamilton. I mean, the way it was, you know, sackcloth cloth and ashes from poor Nico. I mean, really, was is is this a mountain out of a molehill? Oh, uh, it's great for Formula One, though. I mean, I mean, you can you can always pontificate about the the moral impl implications as to what what Nico Rosberg was thinking going to that corner on lap two. Why Nicky Lauda stepped out of line of the team? Why Toto Wolff stepped out of line? Well, we know why Nicky Lauda stepped out of out of line with the team. He's a tool. He's, <laughs> he's a law unto himself. Uh, is uh, is senior Nicky Lauda, but. For Lewis Hamilton to come out and, you know, reveal the inner workings of team debriefs as to what Nico said without the chance of Nico, you know, rebutting those claims. Uh, you know, he's out of line, but, you know, it's great for Formula One. It's getting it in the newspapers and on telly. It, to me, it nearly seems orchestrated. I, I think the, the, the whole, the, the whole uh, fiasco is, uh, I, I've watched the crash numerous times. I don't think there's anything in it. I'm about Ute drivers, so that's nothing. Uh, we have more contact in pit lane uh, between uh, between uh, drivers. So look, uh, it is good for the, uh, Formula One. Everyone's talking about it. Um, I just uh, I just can't wait for uh, Danny Ricciardo just to keep chipping away while these two guys are uh, throwing their toys out of bed and uh, and duelling with each other. And we've got an Aussie, a proud Aussie, uh, showing the world what Australian drivers can do. I think that's been the, the huge surprise. I mean, when we took a break 13 weeks ago from the show, I don't think any of us would have been thought that we'd been sitting here later and Dan Ricciardo has, not, has won not just one, but three uh, Formula One Grands Prix. Is he now a, a, a real chance of possibly even getting up and winning this thing, coming up around the outside, Steve Bradbury style? Well, if you think about it, Lewis Hamilton has had three no-point no scoring finishes so far this season. Nico Rosberg's had one. If he gets two more and Ricardo takes those wins, that's 50 points uh, to, to Mr. Ricardo. not to mention the double points finale in Abu Dhabi. The controversial one, but that's still half a shot. That's another 100 points he could possibly get. I think the, some of the circuits that are coming up are going to suit Danny. Um, and uh, I, I'm not surprised at all. Um, I followed him from when he first went overseas and um, I, I, I did not know, but I, I, was, I was quietly confident that he was going to do as well as he has. Uh, I knew he was going to show it, uh, uh, Sebastian Vettel, not as much as he had. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm all for it, bring it on. Um, yeah, I, I just love seeing an Aussie up there. I was a big fan of Mark Webber's, but um, yeah, I'm on the, on the Danny bandwagon now, that's for sure. It's going to be a great end of the season. Have we now sort of forgotten about the fact that you know at the start of the year the cars are hideous, they sound horrible. I mean, a, f a few really good races. Do we care anymore? I, I, I was at the uh, the Australian Grand Prix and I honestly thought the the only thing that was interesting was the uh, the two seater Minardi that was doing the rides 
um, you know, the, the car, you know, it was a bit of a, it was disheartening to hear the cars as they were because, you know, the sound is such a big uh, part of F1. But uh, I think that, you know, you watch the races now and it's only every blue moon that you'll say, oh, yeah, they do sound a little bit differently. But uh, the racing's been that, that good this year that it's, I think it's overshadowed that. So uh, I don't think that'll be a problem. That'll just become, you know, part of the woodwork from now on. Well, you've got a lot of, you know, obviously, hardcore Formula One fans, you know, mm. listening to Box of Neutrals. What's the feedback from them? Like, have they sort of, you know, put that aside now and said, we don't care? I think I'm quite happy just personally. I mean, the industrial deafness that I'm slowly getting working in radio and, you know, going to Formula One races, uh, I'm almost grateful that I've only got one hazard in my life now to contend with, with with radio. But, I mean, if we look back in the past, you know, with the Michael Schumacher era, the V10s were, were absolutely monstrously loud. And that was an era of domination. And, you know, that's not good for the sport either. I think if we look at the quality of the racing and the generation... Um, that's coming through now, not only the young guys getting used to it. I mean, I think there's another holistic argument that you could possibly argue that, you know, maybe it's getting a little bit easier for the younger guys to get used to. I mean, Danny, Danny Fiat, for example, and Toro Rosso, uh, it's not as big of a jump to Formula 1 now as it was, you know, last year, for example. I think that, I think the categories before, um, the GP categories before Formula 1, the cars are so similar that um, it is making it an, an easier stepping stone. But, um, you know, you've got Verstappen, um, you know, um, coming in at, at 16 years old. You know, who would have thought of that 30 years ago? So, uh, yeah, that's very yeah, true. it's very interesting, that's for sure. <laughs> well, we'll, uh, we'll talk about uh, Formula 1, obviously, in the weeks to come. But uh, when we come back after the break, we're going to head out locally to Sandown International Motor Raceway. And we'll talk about uh, what uh, Gerard, will be, Gerard will be doing in a couple of weeks' time. You're watching In Pit Lane. We'll be right back after this break. More power, better fuel economy, a cleaner, more efficient engine. They're just a few of the advantages of having your car tuned on a Dynotech dyno. To find your nearest Dynotech workshop, go to dyno.com.au. Dynotech by Dino Dynamics. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Now, just a quick reminder that next week on the program, in our preview of the Sandown 500, we'll be joined by two of the top V8 supercar drivers. One guy going to be very, very busy. He's driving in his regular Carrera Cup drive, as well as co-driving with Craig Lowndes in the 888 Commodore. He's Stephen Richards. Also joining us all the way from Sweden is, of course, Volvo driver from Gary Rogers Motorsport, Volvo Polestar Racing. He is Robert Delgren. That's next week, live here in the studio on In Pit lane but as we said also out at Sandown the V8 Utes and uh, Jared the, the V8 Utes are, they're very popular at the moment but what happens the Utes are going I mean there's no Falcon Utes no Commodore Utes anymore what happens then? Yeah, the category's in a bit of a, a progression. It's um, it's uh, it's going to what we'd like to call a year to the future. We've got a bit of a project happening at the moment where we um, we obviously need more manufacturers than Ford and Holden because they're stopping the manufacturing of their of their Utes. So um, yeah, it's an exciting time for the Ute category, and uh, over the next uh, twelve to eighteen months, you'll see um, you know uh, uh, cars being made, um, and there's tenders going out for building processes and stuff like that. So we'll have um, Nissan Navaras and and uh, Holden Colorados and. Uh, um, you know, we'll have a, 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 a like a silhouette uh, kind of chassis, um, you know, and uh, it's sort of going to make the, the racing a lot closer. And so will they be more, in, in terms of appearance, will they be more like the Craftsman trucks that we see yeah. in the NASCAR? Yeah, they will be. Uh, it's, it's a little bit unknown at the moment because it's all sort of being kept in-house. Um, little bits of information are being um, being put out, but uh, for the time being, we're still racing the current cars and, and, uh, and getting underway with that. But uh, no, exciting things in the future with the V8 Utes, and obviously we need to uh, progress with, you know, how the markets are progressing out there in the, in the marketplace. And with, with cars, so um, yeah, I, I'm all for it. And anything to to uh, to strengthen um, what is an already popular category, um, yeah, you know, is a good thing. The cars are, are very close to in terms of performance. I mean, in terms of the engines, I mean, what what can you do to the engine? What sort of power are you putting out in in, in these cars now? Um, so the, the engines are obviously there's the, the, the Ford and, and the Holden uh, six liter. Um, but they, they all put out exactly the same horsepower, so they build it uh, and sealed at exactly the same um, engine builder in, in Queensland, um, and then they have a locked ECU, so there's very few things you can do to the engine to increase the power. Um, you know, um, rear wheel drive uh, horsepower is between sort of 330 and 370 horsepower, um, um, depending on what, what team you're at. And, um, and uh, yeah, so not a huge amount of horsepower for a car that weighs uh, two tonne. They're on a radial tyre, they've got a lock diff, so uh, they're, uh, they're quite a unique uh, a car to drive. I've always said any V8 supercar race meeting, a V8 Ute is the most technically uh, hard to drive uh, car out there. So uh, they're fun to drive, it's my third year and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. 
So out at Sandown, what's the what's the format of the race out there? The usual format, or do you have something special? Um, no, uh, usual format. Three races. We've got a reverse grid race in race two. So uh, the winner of race one picks uh, a, a ball out of a, a number out of a hat, and uh, and uh, we go reverse grinning. So we always want to be in that in that top bunch to, to get the inversion. And uh, Sandown delivers really cl close racing, obviously, because it's sort of sort of only really a four corner track. Um, it's handy for me because I only live about three streets away, so I can go go home for a shower in between <laughs> races. Um, You're not one of the people complaining about the noise. <laughs> no, <are you>? no, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. But uh, no, so it, it always delivers really good racing. Uh, it's my home track, um, uh, as with a lot of other drivers, and uh, yeah, can't wait to get out there. So uh, uh, we usually have an F1 style qualifying uh, format. Um, but because of uh, time restrictions, um, uh, F1 style is in um, top, 10, uh, top 30, top 20, top 10, um, and there's cutoffs. But uh, we're back to just uh, the one 20 minute session where um, the fastest time is the fastest time, which will suit me a little bit better. So, uh, yeah, can't wait to get out there. It's going to be great. I suppose if we're talking about you know, Formula One and Utes in the same breath, I mean, you know, Rob, <laughs> as a purist, as someone who loves it, you know, what's your take on the Utes? I tell you what, one, one of these days we're going to see Formula One qualifying where it is drawn out of a hat. I mean, it has to happen. You know, law of averages has to work out that some <laughs> well, sort of well, change Bernie, Bernie wants to introduce random sprinklers at some stage, so we're not far away. Well, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I mean, we were speaking with uh, BBC's Ben Edwards. Uh, oh, name dropper. Yeah, with name dropper. <laughs> just, just casually speaking to old Benno. Uh, you can catch that at boxandinitials.com. <laughs> uh, to download and he, you know we were talking about Flavio Buratore as this wild character in Formula 1 and you know he's probably a little bit too uh, on the nose with you know some of the controversy surrounding the sport but you know Ben was all for the sprinklers idea and went this is the same Ben who was describing Flavio Buratore as a madman <laughs> just moments ago but yeah, you know what forget your ute racing has its place I mean we've got to remember that motorsport is inherently entertaining and Formula 1 is still show business sure it's a very elitist form of show business but um, you know V8 Utes at least it's accessible at least you don't have to go through what about three million dollars and a stint in Europe to even think about doing V8 Utes you can, it's you know quite affordable no, it, 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 you know like we, we pride ourselves on on, on, on being a, a spectacle, if you want to call it. Um, and uh, and well, we, we've got like the we wrestling rate. style names, have you? <laughs> yeah. What's your nickname? No, Everyone's I'm, got a nickname. I'm Maverick. You know, Maverick. I'm a big, big Top Gun fan, massive uh, Tom Cruise fan, so I picked Maverick. But uh, um, so, yeah, look, you know, there's a lot of Yahoos out there, but, uh, you know, we're all friends at the end of the day. And uh, But when we uh, when the visors go down and, and the red light goes off, it's uh, V8, U, V8 Ute Racing at its purest. And uh, if anyone has ever watched it, uh, it's very entertaining. There's times when I, um, you know, I'm actually in the race, uh, and then on two weeks, uh, a week later, I watch it, the coverage on TV and actually sit down, I'm on the edge of my seat going, how good is this race? And I'm actually in it. So um, Utes, is, Utes are great. And I suppose that's the thing about V8 Utes and also to an extent V8 supercars as well, is that, you know, the, the formula for exciting racing isn't all that, isn't all that complex. It's you know, too much power and not enough grip yeah. equals great racing. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the perfect scenario. So we've got... Um, We've got a very small amount of grip, um, a very big heavy car, um, 32 of them, and uh, a, lot of ego, a, lot, a lot of egos out there and a lot of power. So, um, yeah, the, the cars are constantly sideways and it's a battle, uh, it's battle right down the wire, yeah. Well, good luck with it uh, out at Sandown for the rest of the year. Also at no Bathurst problem. as well, that'll be fun as well. Rob, a quick plug box of neutrals. Yes, uh, Friday 3.30pm on ABC Grandstand Digital is our uh, preview of the weekend as a whole, but the actual race preview, 9 o'clock, full hour, of uh, live race preview coverage on ABC Grandstand Digital. ABC Grandstand Digital. And as we said, next week on the program, we'll be joined by Robert Delgren and Stephen Richards. Uh, just quickly, also want to say at the start of the program, you probably saw a dedication to a guy called Craig Young. You might not have known Craig, but it's it. He has been responsible for so many people's careers, so many young people getting into the Australian television industry. He was in charge of this studio here. It's not, it's not an exaggeration to say this show would not be around. It would have died years ago if it hadn't have been for, for Craig's support. And that's true of so many other programs here on Channel 31 and RMITV. So from all of us at RMITV, all of us at In Pit Lane, and especially from me to, to his family and friends, to, to Craig's family and friends, uh, we're going to miss him a lot and we thank him for everything he did for us. For now, until we see you next week, from all of us here at In Pit Lane, bye for now.